In today's video, I spent 100 days in No Man's Sky, and here's what happened. No Man's Sky is an open world exploration game where you are able to explore an infinite number of galaxies, building bases, collecting resources, and discovering creatures. I mean, look at this man. The possibilities are endless. After picking up No Man's Sky for the first time since 2016, a couple weeks back, I've been non-stop playing this game, to the point where, you guessed it, 100 in-game days have passed, and boy do we have some stories to tell. This game is absolutely massive, so there is no physical way for me to do everything in the 100 days, but stay tuned to the end of the video to see just how far I'm able to get. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing, and if you enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Day one I spent finding my feet after waking up on a brand new planet. My job here was to find and repair a spaceship so that we could escape from the planet we was currently on in the hopes of finding other travellers like myself. After gathering enough resources to repair my ship I was able to take flight and launch into space. Oh my god yeah. <laughs> oh I can use a boost. After reaching space, we received coordinates from an unknown source, which we was tasked with finding the source of. Wait, I can... Oh, there we go. All right, I can... Cool. Nice. Oh, nice. Oh, sh Okay, maybe I shouldn't have done that. After landing on the planet, I managed to get myself in trouble. Already. At this point, we are only on day two, so it's great to see that I'm off to such a great start in making friends in distant lands. Yeah, that did not end well. After locating the source of the coordinates, I was able to extract some base building parts to allow us to start to build within the game. Right now, this was the least of my priorities. By day five, we had built the foundations of a base to allow us to communicate with fellow travelers among the stars. It was at this point in the game where we were able to once again take flight and visit a nearby space station. Space stations act as mini hubs which allow you to trade, purchase various materials and speak with the locals of that specific galaxy. After teleporting back to base, we had more resource collecting to do. Our mission? install a hyperdrive so that we could warp to a completely new galaxy in the universe. It was halfway through day 7 where we had gathered enough resources from different planets and trades to build a hyperdrive system and it was time to move over to the next galaxy. Uh, finalize, okay, so complete hyperdrive. Um. It was in this new galaxy where we received some strange unknown coordinates. By day 10, I had gathered enough resources to track the coordinates which led me to the space anomaly. Now aside from the mini hubs scattered in each galaxy, the anomaly is a travelling multiplayer hub that you can summon. This is where you are able to take on quests, upgrade gear and customise your character. After speaking with some of the fine folk here, this is where I decided to take on my first Nexus mission in hunting dangerous pirates. Nexus missions work as a bounty board of souls, allowing players to take on different types of missions that sees you collect resources, hack sentinels, and hunt creatures, or in my case, pirates. Okay, the this one sounds more fun. That actually was game changing. That was way harder than I thought, but I think I was just making it difficult for myself. After finishing the quest going into day 14, I decided to go exploring after completing a couple of main storyline quests. I travelled to a dissonant planet where I was able to gather some valuable resources. This had attracted some more sentinel attention. I fled the planet, however, this attracted some sentinel ships which I had to fend off until finally a sentinel capital ship approached. Oh my god, I don't want to be this close. Yeah, definitely not. Come on! Get 
Yo, let's go. Let's go. This took me until day 17 to beat the capital ship, but boy oh boy was it worth it. Defeating this ship not only led me to one of the coolest planets ever, but also to a crashed sentinel ship. Would you look at that? Like, holy, wait, that's the back of it and that's the front? Oh damn, this is nice. Harvest radiant shards to complete the plot interface. Claim ship. Yo, what? No way. Yo! <laughs> I was able to repair the Sentinel ship and claim it as my very own, which was 100% a step up from my starting ship as it was worth 22 million credits. I decided to take up to day 23 to upgrade my ship and exosuit to make things much, much easier when trying to harvest materials, travel from galaxy to galaxy, and it was on day 23 after traveling to a distant galaxy where I received a call for help. A nearby freighter needed some attacking ships to be taken care of. And after I did that, being the nice person I am, I was welcomed aboard the ship. Not just to shake hands, but to receive an offer I couldn't refuse. The captain of the ship offered the freighter to me for free. Yes, for free. So I couldn't say no. I was now the captain of a fleet and needed recruits to lead expeditions for me in other galaxy while I did exploring of myself. And after quickly finding one of the best recruits I could find, I sent them on their way to explore. Throughout my long playthrough of No Man's Sky, it's super easy to get engrossed in the game for long periods of time. And that's why I'm super excited to announce my brand new partnership with the channel. Mad Monk is a revolutionary company which focuses on creating supplements for gamers. Feel like you're going to want an energy boost for your long gaming session? Check out their gaming performance supplement. Not only is it sugar free and vegan friendly, it gives you boosts in all of these areas listed here. Like most people, it's easy to let life get in the way of your daily vitamin and diet goals. Thankfully, Mad Monk have created FDA approved formulas in their new champion supplements, which help fulfill those goals whilst keeping you close to your PC. If you would like to find out more and level up your gaming experience, check out Mad Monk in the description of the video. I decided to go on a hunt for a planet which I could call my home. Somewhere to build a base, to document my exploration, store any valuable materials and just overall make mine. I wanted this to feel as home-like as possible and what better way of doing that than to try and find somewhere which resembles the planet we all live on, Earth. It was at day 32 where I found a planet which looked strikingly similar but had rings around the planet which I thought was super cool and I mean look at this place. It's goddamn beautiful. With the beginning of the new base build I wanted to see what other ships were out there for trade so I just so happened to stumble across a traveller in a space station willing to trade their S class ship for mine and just a few extra credits on top which I thought was an absolute steal. At day 40 I had found a trading post on a distant planet. Different ships from all around the different galaxies would come with the sole purpose of trading. This gave me the perfect idea. I could continuously trade here to find the perfect ship for me as well as looking for valuable resources along the way to complete upgrades on my ship or exosuit and if I set up a base computer here I will be able to teleport back on command. Not only did this planet have a trading post offering trades for A and S class ships but it also had vast amounts of salt in the water which is super valuable when farmed. This would end up being my ticket to making credits to exchange my ship once more for something more agile. I didn't like how sluggish my ship felt so I decided to trade with a local for their ship and on day 45 I found the Dance of Gravity. By the way, how cool is that name? The game came up with it and I think it's one of the coolest ship names ever. A class. Uh, damage potential is our hyperdrive is down by 30 maneuverability up. I think I'm gonna go with this. 
The Dance of Gravity. Yeah, I think this ship is way cooler. Anyway, after picking up the new ship, I left the planet to find an abandoned vessel. This vessel gave me coordinates to a nearby galaxy, which I needed to investigate. Before I could go anywhere, I needed to harvest some materials to recharge the hyperdrive on my new ship. The coordinates had led me to a crashed ship, guarded by corrupted sentinels. After clearing out the sentinels, we was once again given a rendezvous point, which led us to a heavily guarded derelict freighter. Oh, what the... Okay, um, I, what? Was not prepared for this. It looks like we have a, a friend helping us. Oh, is this the dude we recruited from our freighter? It might be, actually. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, so. Okay, time to take down the freighter ship, I guess. Oh, wait, no. After clearing waves of pirates, we was taken to a nearby base where we could communicate with the Voice of Freedom, giving us a ticket. This ticket allowed us to board an outlaw space station in a different galaxy. This space station allows you to take on highly illegal missions for a lot more rewards than the standard missions. It also allows you to obtain resources specific to these missions and trades. Whoa, this is different. This is like a pirate anomaly, right? Oh, it's like corrupted and stuff. Strange. Locate the voice of freedom. I'm guessing it's gonna be... Oh, speak to those aboard. Holy. They offer a lot. Sell back market goods in regular systems can be highly profitable. Disguise your visit to an outlaw station. Cool hide your tracks and then do we go and sell stuff is that right after offloading smuggled items on a nearby space station and disrupting the local records on that station we had completed this outlaw mission which rewarded us with a lot of credits and valuable resources and it was at this point in the game where i started really focusing on upgrading all of my gear including my exosuit ship and multi-tool I really wanted to upgrade my multi-tool and get something completely different, so in order to do that, I was back to grinding salt for money, so I could afford a super cool A-class multi-tool that I had seen in one of the nearby space stations. After resource grinding for 10 days, I was able to make enough credits to purchase a brand new multi-tool. This multi-tool comes equipped with a blaster function as well, which would allow me to take care of sentinel activity much, much easier. This also gave me time to install some more technology to my ship as well as some new functionality to my multi-tool now that I had space for upgrades. Whoa. <laughs> oh, it's like a bolt. All right. Awesome. After building an economy scanner on my ship, I was able to identify three-star economy systems and easily identify their respective trading posts. This would allow me to set up bases on each post where I could teleport from system to system to sell resources for more money as the economy was doing much, much better. It would also allow me to keep an eye out for different S-Class ships and when I'm able to afford them, trade with the locals. I spent the next 10 days farming resources and purchasing materials in order to complete upgrades on all of my gear. This includes technology modules which I had gathered across the 75 days prior. I wanted to get as many exosuit inventory upgrades as possible and for those of you who don't know you can acquire those by purchasing them from individual vendors at each space station once. After visiting the anomaly on day 77, I decided to take a look at the Quicksilver shop. This particular shop offers exotic items for Quicksilver, a currency earned through different Nexus missions and the expeditions. At the time of recording this video, there was a weekend mission going on and offered a lot of Quicksilver. I started the mission and had a couple of travelers join me on visiting a planet to dig up ancient burial sites. This gave me a couple of really, really valuable pieces of material, which I later sold for a lot of credits. These like dinosaur things are looking... What? I want to just do a little dance. Look at that. Look at that man. Oh my god. What are you? What the... 
Oh my god, is he angry? Okay, um, maybe... Worn bones. I got a really rare item from that. What the hell? Alright. Uh, return to the space anomaly. Alright. So, this should be the end of the mission then. And then we can get some cool shit for our character, I guess. After completing the mission, I traveled to a nearby space station where there was a strange hologram character. After speaking with them, they gave me coordinates to a gravesite. This gravesite gave me special upgrades for my multi-tool which allowed me to gather 50% more resource from anything mined. This type of thing just shows you how a little spontaneity in this game rewards you for every step of the way. Whoa. Unknown grave. That was so worth it. I've got like 50% resources mine. After visiting the hologram's grave, I decided to travel to the known location of a black hole on day 87. I'd never explored one before and was intrigued to find out what rewards I could seek from exploring. After traveling to the location, I was warped 1.4 million light years away from my current location and I just knew I had to find somewhere to create a base. And what better way than to expand my trading post operation in a nearby high economy area. Oh my god, that looks nuts. What the hell? Uh, I guess we go black hole first. What the hell? Whoa! What? <laughs> We traveled 1.4 million light years through a black hole. Uh, okay. After spending the next seven days searching around the newfound area of the galaxy, I'd stumbled across a really, really nice tropical planet where I thought it would be great to give another go at base building. I didn't really understand the depth of building in this game fully yet, but I wanted to make somewhere where I could build it up and be proud of. After building the foundations as well as a research and science station, I needed recruits. So I went to a couple of space stations to recruit some other travelers to come and work on my base with me to help expand. And it was at this point where I started to draw a close on the game. Day 100 fast approached and I decided to visit a community base to get an insight on what is possible within this game. When I landed on this community base, I was absolutely blown away by the stunning details. This really just showed off what you can do in the game. From everything to the base building, customizing and upgrading gear and your spaceship, there is so much possibility and that doesn't even scratch the surface. I will continue to play No Man's Sky to get better at the game through building, trading and upgrading. I genuinely had so much fun. If you guys would like me to continue this game into 200 days, let me know in the comment section. But for now, we close out day 100 with high hopes for the future of No Man's Sky. If you guys enjoyed today's video, again, subscribe if you're new here. I'm going to be posting a lot more content just like this, so stay tuned. A massive shout out to the members of the channel once again. Thanks to you guys, I'm able to keep the channel running. And if you want to join them, click the join button next to my channel. That's it from me. See you all very soon.